everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to sew this pencil case. You can get the pattern for free in my Facebook group, I'll link it below. Um, the materials that you're going to need are a cotton canvas for the outside, uh, you'll need at least 60 centimeters of zipper, inside you got some cotton woven, just regular cotton woven, quilt bean cotton or whatever. Um, in the front you've got your magnetic snaps and it can hold a huge amount of stuff. So I've got a whole lot of pens and pencils in here and pencil crayons. You could also use it as a toiletry bag or I mean really anything. Uh, it's got lots of space. The double zipper makes it really easy to see what you've got in there. The magnetic clasp also holds the front nice and tight shut so it's all put away nicely. So to begin with, you will need to print out your pattern, obviously. Again, that's in my Facebook group that's linked below. After you've printed, you'll, you can tape, you can take the main body pieces together. So there's uh, the two pieces, you just overlap the dashed line, tape them together and you've got your main piece, or you can just print to the measurements that are printed on the pattern and in the tutorial as well. Don't forget to mark all of your notches. We've got notches on the center panel, on the body piece, and on the end pieces. We also have some the snap markings for the magnetic snaps. For the center panel, you will need to mark the snap onto the lining piece. And on the end pieces, you'll need to mark the snap spot on one of your main end pieces. So I have my main fabric here. These are my zipper connectors. Then I've got my lining and I have my dig feel light for the end pieces and I also have a little just a little scrap piece for to strengthen um, to reinforce the center panel because the center panel has the magnetic clasp on it as well. First I'm going to fuse my um, interfacing and then I will fuse the dig feel light onto that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll do some sewing. Okay, we are ready for the next step. That would be sewing the center panel. I've got my two center panel pieces there. I've got them all fused with the Decofeel light on the back of the lining piece, just a little blob for the magnetic clasp. So first we are going to take the main panel piece, whoops, and stick some double-sided tape all around that edge. Let's just start here. And then I like to go right out to the edge with my tape. Then I make a little snip so that I can get it around the corner. Now we're going to separate the zipper. So this is the right side. I'm going to lay this right sides together onto the double sided tape. First I'm going to peel off this backing. That's one of the useful parts of just making little snips into the tape around the corner or the, the curve here is that you can pull it off in one piece afterwards. So here I'm going to make sure that the edges are nicely together, that it's flush on this end as well. And then I'm not pulling or pushing. I'm just going to go nice and gently around here carefully. At this point we're going to make tiny snips in here too. 
so we can get around that corner a bit more evenly. Oops. Just make sure if you're making snips like this, not to snip more than one centimeter or three quarter inches in to the tape. So I've made a few little snips. There you go. A couple little snips there, but I'm not going to go further than one centimeter in. I'm going to go all the way around that way. And now I'm just snipping every uh, half inch or so. This way. So I had a bit of extra zipper tape. So I'm just going to cut that off here. So, and this is perfectly normal. You want this to stick up a bit like that because that means that when you've turned it around right side out that it will lay nice and flat. So now would be the time to baste around this area. I've just got my regular foot on for now. I'm going to use a long stitch length. Here we go. I've got it all basted in place now. And now I'm going to install the magnetic snap. And here I'm going to put the socket piece. So I've got my dot here. I'm going to set my washer piece with the dot in the middle to mark the in along the inside of that washer piece. I've got some tiny little snippers and use the sharp side. Give that a bit of a snip along there. Now I can set the little arms through those holes that I just cut. So my camera ran out of space, but um, after I put the little legs through, then I've got the washer on there and flipped them in. Then I'm going to grab my main panel piece with the zipper on it, and I'm going to put some more double-sided tape around it. You don't have to use double-sided tape here. I just find it works best that way. Gonna grab this one for here. So 
and we get our notches here on top. We're going to match those up first. So we've got a notch here and here. Line those up. And we've got right sides together, huh? Then just going along the edge here, lining that up. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky here because you've got that zipper that's sticking up there. But just go nice and slowly, take your time down to the end. Make sure that's nice and sticky there. I'm just kind of flattening out the teeth as I go along here. But they're still bulging a bit, but we want them to bulge. They need to be a bit bulgy because otherwise they won't lie nicely once we've got the uh, once we've got it sewn and turned. There we go. So I like using the double-sided tape just because it really helps keep it in place better. I'm going to add some clips here too though because that zipper is making it bulge quite a bit and it's kind of pulling my tape up as well or pulling the fabric off of the tape again. So just through here. Then I'm going to put the zipper foot on my sewing machine. Get my zipper foot. And now I'm going to sew with a one inch seam allowance and with a regular stitch length of like two and a half. Got my hump jumper here to help get that started. Start. I'm going to come around this bend. I'm going to use my tweezers here to hold it down a little bit. Make sure those zipper teeth are out of the way. This part is a bit tricky, especially keeping that zipper tape nice and smooth without sewing on the zipper teeth. Now I'm going to trim it. And after trimming it down, I am going to just use my lighter here just a little bit. Um, I don't want to burn my fabric, but I just want to melt the zipper teeth, uh, the zipper tape, so it doesn't unravel. So. There we go. Now we're ready to turn it. Go. Now we're going to press that and top stitch. So I've got it pressed. Just be careful when you're pressing that you 
don't melt your zipper teeth. And then now I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to use a stitch length of 3 or 315 and get that top stitched. So for top stitching, I am going to put my other foot back on. Because this will give me a nice eighth inch top stitch. Got my needle all the way out to the right. Stitch length is at three. I'm going to grab my hump jumper again for the beginning. No skip stitches. Looks good. Just baste across the bottom still. A longer stitch length. There we go. On to the next step. Here we've got our main panel piece. Here I have a notch, and here I have another notch, and I am going to want to now um, measure in from the sides that don't have a notch. So we have the long sides and the short sides. We're going to measure in from the short side. Here we're going to measure two centimeters in. I'm going to use a friction pen. Use a friction pen to mark that because that will disappear again with the ironing. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the other side already too. So it's two centimeters in, which is about three quarter inches. Now I'm going to take some double-sided tape. Put it right up to that mark. Gonna remove the backing. And get my zipper. So I've got the other side of that zipper that I used for the center panel. And now I'm gonna make sure it's flush along the edge. So nice and flush here and nice and flush along this edge. And then I'll take it until of my mark here along the edge and then off like that. This, I let it have a little bit of a fold here. So there's a little fold there and then I'm gonna clip that in place. And then I'm gonna baste the entire zipper length I got that pasted. Now I'm going to trim this zipper edge off here. And that's nice and flush there as well. And I'm going to repeat on this side. Here's my mark. And 
my zipper teeth are right up above on that mark there. I think I'm going to take a pin there though. There we go. And I'm going to baste that in place as well. So I've got it all basted and the zippers are cut off and they're nice on the same side, obviously. Um, then I'm going to take my lining piece after I put some more double sided tape on here though. Get this edge. I love double sided tape. I find it so helpful, especially with zippers. So. Right sides together. side. And now sewing together those two sides. And there we go. You might need to use your hump jumper again to get over that zipper bit there, but uh, one centimeter seam allowance. I've got my shorter stitch length here, or shorter, the two and a half, the regular stitch length actually. Now we're going to flip this right side up. And get this nice and flat here. Just finger press it first. And here, and then I'm going to press that with my iron, you get a nice flat seam there, and top stitch it again like I did before. And then you have like this really nice finish on that end of the zipper there. Same for the other side, I'm going to press it and top stitch. Alright, so we got that one sewn up, nicely tucked in and top stitched, and we got a nice clean edge there. Next step is to uh, is the pull loop. We're going to be using this leftover piece of zipper tape. This one, I think I have about 12 centimeters, which is about four and a half inches, and then I'm just going to cross it over like that and then I'm gonna place it face down on in the middle here I do have a notch here where I could actually double check that I'm in the middle like so and then I am going to baste this in place as well. And then this will be our little pulley loop. So I'll go and baste that. There we go. I went over it a few times because this is going to get a, quite a bit of stress with uh, opening and closing. So on to the next step, which is getting um, the zipper pulls on. This can be a little bit tricky. So first um, just do one side and it's very important to make sure that this matches up. 
I am actually, I have a bit of overhang here, so I'm going to trim that down just a tad. Because I'm going to want all of this to line up at the end because I'm going to be binding this. Now, time to put on the zipper pulls. So I've got my two pretties here. Now, in order to have these line up, first I check in which direction the zipper teeth are going to be overlapping. As in, is am I going to have this uh, little tooth on top or am I going to have this one on top? And in this case, I'm going to have the tooth from my center panel on the top, which means I'm going to slide my pull onto that side first. Oh, uh, some of them have like a little, like a little tooth in there to stop the zipper from sliding. And this one is actually one that has that. And when you pull up on this thing, then it pulls that tooth up. So if you have a zipper that has a stopper in it, you're going to have to, um, be able to hold your zipper pull in a way that you can pull that tooth up. I hold it like this so that I can, I've got my thumb stopping it from flipping up here and then I use this finger here to push it down. So I'm gonna put this on here. So, except not so, it's not going. There we go. So now it's, it's on there. And I'm not gonna let it come out of the butt end yet. I will take my other side and thread the other side in too. So now I've got them both sides in but this side is still too far up. So I need to pull that out just a tad. Whoops, no, that went too far. And then I can see, I don't know if you can, you can't see it very well on the video, but I can see which tooth is on the top here. So I can give this a bit of a push in. And I can already see here now, like that is not even, so I'm gonna take that back outwards. Just a little. Let's see here. And it's nice and even at the top. So I can go ahead and zip that one up. And now I'm going to flip that around and do the other side. So I've got myself a tube here. Oh, I forgot to baste here. <laughs> I'm going to do that before I close up my tube here. I'm going to baste the two long edges together so that I don't get any of that bellying. these on together. There we go. So it's already starting to take shape. Here we got our pull tab, we got our front flap. It's looking good. Next up, we are going to put the socket side. Uh, oh, bummer. Yep. <laughs> I put the socket side up here. Um, socket side should go on this one. So I'm going to be putting the other side over here. This is the same principle as we did before gonna take that washer, 
place the center dot on the dot that I made. Then I'm going to use my little sharp scissors. Then I'm going to grab my little magnet here. washer back on and flip those little lines down. Make sure they're nice and flat. Don't press too hard because depending on your brand sometimes the stud can get pushed in if you press too hard on the back. So watch out for that. Alrighty, then we can put these together now. Um, I am going to use a tiny bit of glue. You don't need to do this, but I am going to put just a tad of glue, just a couple little dots because I don't want it to press through onto my lining fabric, but it helps it stay in place. So I got wrong sides together, so both right sides are showing. Just going to dab a little bit of glue on there. Just be careful you don't put too much if you're going to do this too, because it might press through onto your lining fabric and you don't want that, obviously. So then I'm going to baste around here so these stay together. time. I got a little thread here. Okie dokie. So first we are going to open these zippers again a bit and flip this whole thing the other way around because we are going to be working from the inside. Now you can close them up again. It's just easier to flip when they're a little open. We're going to start with the back which means we're not going to be using the magnet piece. We are going to be using the regular piece. Now I have kind of directional fabric, so I want, my, I want my leaves to look upwards, which means I am going to put them in this way, or I want afterwards for them to be upwards. So I'm gonna put them in this way, which means I gotta flip it around because we got right sides together. And now, I'm going to find my notches here and here, and I'm going to line those up with the notches on my body piece here. and my center panel piece. And now I'm going to ease sides in. Now my lining that I'm using here is a little bit thicker than a quilting cotton so it's not going to ease quite as easily. But basically I'm going to have my seam exactly along the edge of the Take a feel light that is on the in uh, on the main end piece. So 
if I have some waviness up here, that is perfectly fine and actually normal because the seam is going to be right up against the fabric. So this is a little fiddly. Now, we may need to wiggle around a little more. I am a huge fan of tons of clips. I used a Rollin in here, so it's a little bit stiffer. I probably could have got away without the woven interfacing on my linen here, but it'll be a nice sturdy pencil case. Now, you could use staples around here if you want to hold it in place. It does make sewing it quite a bit easier. And I actually am going to do that. It is a technique I learned from Alexis at Oro Rosa Patterns. She does that with her, a lot of her bags that have binding. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to grab my stapler. So here we go. And I'm stapling inside of the seam allowance. stapled and ready to sew. So I've gone ahead and basted my base on now, or my end piece. Uh, now it's time to take the staples out. I actually also went across my zipper ends here and did a little bar tack um, because I forgot to do that before. So now it's time to get the binding on here. So first of all, we are going to uh, angle off this end. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to get my ruler with the 45 degree angle on it. That's this middle one. 
and I'm going to angle that, or I'm going to place that angle along the edge of my binding. So I've got it nicely lined up there. And then I'm going to mark that angle here. Give that a snip. So now that angle, you're looking from this way. So you've got the wrong side facing you, and the point is on the left hand side when it's pointing away from you, huh? With the wrong side up. So we've got that prepped. Now we're going to fold this in by a centimeter. So we're going to press that. So I've pressed that now. So I've got my edge folded under and then I pressed it back this way. And now I'm just going to snip off this little extra bit here. Um, this little extra bit. I'm going to snip this little extra bit off here. There we go. We're going to leave this bit on here. So, so just that extra bit that was sticking out here after folding it down. So then we are going to take the bag and lay this binding, unfold the one side, and lay it on our edge here. Like so. And then we're going to sew all the way around. We're going to place it as we sew um, on this, or just inside of this fold. So to this side of the fold just slightly. All right, so here we go. I've got my zipper foot on and I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing here. zippers a bit here. It'll give my pouch a bit more room to move around. inside the pouch as well, just to make sure that my inside fabric is laying nice and flat. And I'm sewing it at just under a centimeter seam allowance, so just under 3 8 inch. zipper here in a moment.
So these curves are a little bit finicky, but just go slow, take your time. And it really does work best with a bias tape, so a fabric that is cut on the bias, because it will move with your with the curves a lot easier. As we come back to the beginning here. Get this curve all smoothed out. Just gonna go over this first part for a few more stitches. So there we have it. So we've come, we came sewing over this way, back stitched, and now I've snipped this uh, piece that we were just on. I've snipped it off at an angle as well. And now this can get tucked into this fold here. And flipped around over top to cover up the seam line on the other side. And now we're going to flip it all the way around. It's looking like I may have used too big of a seam allowance on that first seam because I'm having troubles covering up the seam line on this side. So I might actually unfold this just a tad so that I have enough width in my binding to cover up that first seam. Note to self for the other side, use a smaller seam allowance. Now, I like to start on this side of the bag for exactly that reason, because in the back it won't be as visible as in the front. Because on the front hand side you will have the binding is very visible where the opening is. There we go. And now we're going to take it back to the machine 
and we're going to sew right on that edge, like just edge stitching all the way around. I'm going to start here where I've got my little folded bit. So I've got my regular foot back on, I've got my stitch length on three again, and here we go. back side and the front side. And now comes the other side. So now we've got our notch here and our notch on the end piece. And we're going to make sure that we have the snap placed on top. So the notch is going to line up with the bottom here, right sides together, like this. And I'm going to open these up here all the way so that we got lots of room to work in over here. So I'm going to just clip that already on the nice straight edge. And now here I'm going to do it similar to what I did on the other side. Only this time I don't have to ease it into the uh, already closed tube. So here I'm going to make sure that my seam line of one centimeter is along the edge, which means the top part here by the raw edge is going to curve a bit or curl a bit. That is normal. Here we go. And this will be an angle. So when we have it open, it will be proper. So this needs to be at a, well, I guess that's about a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to do the same on the other side.
Now we're going to make sure that this fits. Looks good. What we could do now is do the staples. Here again, it's very important to keep these outside of the seam allowance. I'm out of staples. Back in business. Flip this around. And close these. To make sure that we have everything where it needs to be. So. That is looking great. So this is going to have a slightly larger seam allowance here anyway, but it's already looking amazing. So we can flip that over again. So that was just to test if the zipper is fitting in properly. Now I'm going to baste around here and take my staples back out. So the staple pulled out here on the one side, and I'm just going to take it out all the way. And we got that basted. Okay, staples are out. Binding is prepped with the fold over. Now we are going to start here again, just like we did before. Fold that out. Get it nice and even with the edge. And off we go. So the seam allowance is just under one centimeter or one three eighth inch and making sure to get 
all of my body pieces there nice and smooth and also my binding making sure that angle is this still there Actually sewing just only on the end piece. Well, not quite yet. A couple more stitches. And here, because I've got my foot so far up, I'm gonna stick this hump jumper underneath because I'm going from quite a lot of layers to only a few. The hump jumper helps to keep the foot even and fabric moving smoothly. So here I'm just going to get this other end back under here again too. Make sure the angle is right. my hump jumper again. There we go. So my seam allowance on the binding is a little bit less, like I have it not quite flush with the edge because on the other side I had a bit of trouble getting it all the way over. So I'm just going to compensate a little bit on this side. Oh, I hope I didn't just sew a hole into that curve there, I might have. Feels kind of puckered, but it might be okay. We'll see. The moment of truth is very soon. again and we're gonna sew just past it to here pucker. Good. This side as well. Looks good. So now we're gonna get this cut off and flipped over again.
So when you get to here, we're actually just going to continue the same way. And then we're just going to keep doing it just like that. So that when we got come to around this part, and we're just going to sew over it just like before. And maybe just do a little back stitch there just to make sure that it's nice and solid. And then the same for the other side. Oops. It's going to be a little bit looser on this part because we don't have as many layers underneath, but that's fine. until I get it in there. <coughs> there we go. All clipped on. Now we just gotta sew around. So now we're just gonna top stitch along here, get a bit of edge stitching, and the reason that we do it on the end piece first and then on the body side is because that's the side that is going to be seen here. So we want to make sure this looks pretty. And you'll see the inside as well, but we'll see this more clearly. So we want to make sure that side looks pretty. So here we go. Again, I'm going to start on the bottom. And edge stitch around. Just put my stitch length back up and my needle back to the middle. I want to make sure I'm covering my previous stitch line here. It. Looks good from this side too. Oh, there we got a really nice seam there. So now we've got our bag almost done, or our pencil case, and we can flip it around again. Go. And 
now we just need to do the zipper connector tabs, or tab, and then we are done. So now we have the zipper connector and our little connector tabs. I have already gone ahead and folded this one, so you're gonna first you're gonna fold it in half this way and press it, and then you're gonna fold the sides in to just before the middle press and then fold it back over and press again. So you have four, uh, three folds and you have no raw edges along here. And just sew down the one side. So I've sewn down that length now and I also did some zigzagging across each end just to make sure that we're not going to get any fraying here. And I'm also going to put on just a tad of fray check, just to be sure, because we don't want this unraveling. There we go. The next step is to get the connector tabs through the zipper hole. So this might be tricky. I just trimmed that down a bit in order to get it to fit through my zipper pieces a little bit easier. So now we're going to take these zipper pieces. Now I'm not sure this vinyl might be too thick for these small zipper holes, but no, it looks like it's going to work. There we go. So I got one piece on. Pull the other one through. There we go. Now, make sure they're centered. There we go. So I've got my rivets here and my strap. So I'm going to make sure that it's nicely in the middle there. Also going to mark my hole punch here. So first I'm just going to punch a hole through these two layers. And we'll place that in between and mark that one. Make sure it's centered. I'm afraid to check that as well. I really don't want this to unravel. And then put that together. And we got the nice side of the rivet here. Got this side. I 
in here just make sure you've got your strap uh, that it's not twisted There we have it. All done. And so pretty. And there we have it, our very own amazing giant pencil case or carry-all case that you can put pretty much anything into, toothbrushes or toiletries or makeup or the traditional pens and pencils. Uh, with the double zipper, it makes it super easy to see what you've got in there. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to get something out of it. Again, the free pattern is in my Facebook group, which is linked below. Please leave me a like. That would be awesome. I'd be so happy. And maybe even a subscribe and check out some of my other videos. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in my Facebook group and on social media with all of your amazing creations too. Bye-bye.